I'm going to make a new portal that's going to be for or charge people for it. So I got like the free one, and I'm going to have one that I charge people for. So hedging 101, this stuff will go in there. Um, so what is hedging? Hedging is strategically offsetting risk when holding or trading a stock or option. Essentially, it's an insurance policy for your investment. So why do we hedge? It limits our losses and our risks. It creates a win-win scenario. And it's also an insurance policy, essentially, for our investments. So when should we hedge? That depends on your own strategy and risk tolerance. The lower your risk tolerance, the more important it would be to hedge. I personally like to hedge whenever I'm investing more than 1% of my account. So most of my trades, I use between 1% and 5%. But if I'm going above that 1% mark, that's when I like to hedge. So an example would be if you're using a $100,000 account, and it costs more than a hundred or more than a thousand dollars to enter the play. I would hedge that play. Some other strategies may hedge every single play that they make. Um, for example, some people may only sell open up call spreads instead of just buying calls. Buying a call would be no hedge involved, whereas a call spread, if you're selling an option off an option that you own, um, that's a way to hedge your place. All right, so how do we do this? So one way would be to sell an option off of the option we own. Sorry, my dog. That's good. Well, thank you. All right, so options can be used to hedge either stocks or options. I have a dog hair in my mouth. I'm sorry. Okay, now I'm set. No dogs barking and no dog hair. Uh, so you can use options to hedge either stocks or options. So the example for a way to hedge a stock would be to sell a covered call against the stock you own. This is considered a hedge because you're limiting your risk by taking the premium of the covered call as an initial profit or as like towards your investment. So if you invested in a $10 stock and you bought 100 shares of that stock, it would cost you $1,000. So your full risk, if you just bought 100 shares, you're risking $1,000. That company could go bankrupt and the shares could go to zero. That's probably not going to happen, but that would be your entire risk because that's how much money you have invested. But if you bought the 100 shares and then you sold a $12 covered call on your position every month for $100 in premium. Oh, Jared's hopping in. Here we go. What's up, Jared? You missed a little bit in the beginning, but I'll review it all at the end if you can hear me yet. All right, so this is a hedge because that premium that you got is comes off of your risk. So if you collect $100 premium by selling the $12 call on an initial $1,000 investment, after 10 months, your risk is essentially $0 because you've made $1,000 off of investing $1,000. But you still have the 100 shares, probably, as long as that covered call hadn't gotten exercised, in which case you would have made the $200 profit plus the premium profit of every month you had sold up until that point. So you really hedged that position by making profit in two different levels and you wouldn't have any risk because you'd be out of it by that point. All right, so that's how you would hedge a stock position, uh, which I would highly recommend people do, even though I'm not making recommendations. So with, so with that, would you like my lovely pinterest stock that i feel like i'm gonna have forever um pinterest and start selling puts on it it's a high premium uh stock you should sell puts on that definitely. okay so that's a, but how do i decide because i'm in deep with that because how many uh, shares you got i have not 900 shares yeah why, why wouldn't you be selling you should sell covered calls every month i would so that was my question. Do I sell them as weeklies or am I better to sell them as monthlies? And do I sell them at the level that I need to get out of them? Or do I sell them at just the level that I think it's not going to hit that week? That's all fair questions and it would all be heavily dependent on your strategy. What I like to do is I like to sell monthlies because you get more premium. Now, even if you go a couple months out, that and, I mean, you're going to hold the stock anyways. So I'm just pulling up Pinterest just to get an idea 
of what the premiums look like here. They've been all over the place because the price has been all over the place. Yeah, but let's just say, so you could make $650 by selling an August 20th $70 call. Or if you wanted to go a little bigger, we'll say $75 is about 500 and you could sell nine of those. So you would make $4,500 in a split second. I don't know why you're not doing it. It's crazy to me. No offense. <laughs> Does that make sense, Tiffany? Are you going to do it? Oh, Let's do question. it. Well, yes, I need to do it. But my question is, is then if it gets close because I'm in those for $85. Yeah, but so here, here's the thing. So let's say it gets picked up at $75, right? Let's say somebody has right. to buy those because it doesn't, I know this is hard for people to get to think like this, but it doesn't matter where you got in at because they're not there anymore. It just, it matters absolutely none. Um, like there's no super, you know, there's no, no like high level trader that's making millions and millions of dollars is thinking about, oh, I can't sell this stock because I paid more for it once. You know, it's all about right now what it's worth. Right. Making the most out of it, you know. So I feel like the way that you could make the most out of only 900 shares of Pinterest would be to sell those covered calls at 75 bucks. Now, you're telling me that the worst case scenario to you would be that Pinterest goes to $80, right? And you have to sell them for 75, but you were trying to get out for 85 because that's what you paid for them, right? Correct. So think about it like this. If you sell those 75 and you got $4,500 right now, first of all, that'd be a nice payday, right? Right. It went right to 75. And then you would keep all of your shares. They'd be worth ten dollars more right now than they are right now. So you'd make, you know, nine grand there, and then you make another four and a half grand off selling the calls that don't get exercised. Now, okay, let's just say they do get exercised. Let's say it goes to eighty and they get exercised. Okay, now you get to sell puts around eighty bucks because let's say you really want to be in Pinterest. So now you can sell nine puts because you have the liquid cash from it getting exercised at seventy five dollars. And a put in Pinterest, you know, because all you're doing then is you're selling somebody else the right to sell you the stock. Right. Is what you, you want that right. You want to sell them that right because you're willing to buy it. So then what you would do is, okay, you sold it for 75. Now you're thinking, I want to get back in at 75, but I can't. It's 80. Then you start selling puts. And this creates that option wheel again. But then you start selling puts. At 75 because that's where you sold at and that's where you want to get back in at and then you collect premium every month until it gets exercised you're collecting a couple hundred bucks just by being willing to buy them for that price and then eventually they get exercised and you're back in the play at the same price that you got out of the play at but you made all of the premium in between you made forty five hundred dollars in premium the first time you can make probably another forty five hundred the next time so you're up nine grand on a play that didn't move okay why we hedge and that's why it, it works and it makes sense and that's why options are less risky than stocks because if you do it like this you're not risking anywhere near as much as you are than just buying the stock you're just being willing to buy it you know you're getting paid to be willing to even buy it does that make sense does that help yes i guess i mean my biggest i guess thing and looking at it is how you determine since i'm so out of the money how do you determine the level at which you sell your covered call at? Don't overthink it. So you could go by the okay. Greeks and you could try, you could try to, if you're trying to like really squeeze the most out of it, there's like different formulas and things that you could plug in to try and get the most bang for your buck. But I think what right. yours is, is more of a psychological thing where it's like, I paid this for them. So I want to sell them for this because I want to break even on this trade, but that's, it becomes like a trading ego thing. It's like, I can't have a losing trade, so I, I have to do this. But 
in doing that, you just keep losing. So it's like it, you get stuck in that pattern. Whereas why not start winning by selling the covered calls? I like 75 bucks because it's far enough away that the call is probably going to expire worthless. But if it doesn't, like you're still making $10 from where you're at right now, plus the premium. Okay. Like it's a, it's a win-win to me right there. So it's kind of just an individual, like mm -hmm. look Definitely. at the stock itself. Definitely. It depends see. on your strategy, depending okay. on the stock. So like with, if I was holding Tesla calls, I'd probably be selling like leaps are really expensive. So I might sell like, if I was holding Tesla, I mean, if I was holding shares, I might sell like January leaps for like 20 grand, you know, and then just make 20 grand a year off of holding the hundred shares of Tesla. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay. money, like 900,000 bucks or something. But with Pinterest, it's a little bit cheaper, so I wouldn't do that. Right. So, oh, we got Jeff jumping in too. That's what's up. Fantastic. What's up, Jeff? You guys didn't miss much. I really just talked about hedging um, stocks more than options so far, and I'm about to get into how to hedge your option positions. So you're just in time. Um, all right, so how do we how do we hedge options? So one way is to sell a call off of a call that you already own in the same fashion that I just described doing it with a covered call off of shares that you already own. It's similar to selling a covered call, but you don't have you don't have to own the initial hundred shares because instead you own the right to own the shares at a lower price. Uh, it also works in terms of doing it with a put debit spread instead of a call debit spread. I recently, I was, I was day trading Tesla a little bit in the previous weeks and I showed you guys and everybody that was paying attention how I can get Tesla options for free. And what I did was I bought an option. So I bought like an $800 call for a thousand bucks. What, when it was sitting at support, building some, uh, building a nice little base of support. And I knew it was going to go up to the next, uh, the next level that I was waiting for. I knew it was going to pause at the next resistance for a bit. And that if I did that, the cost of the $800 share would be the cost of the 800 or contract, excuse me, I'm cool. The cost of the $800 contract would be the same. The $810 contract would cost the same once the price went up a little bit. Does that make sense? Maybe, hopefully. Um, can you say can you say that one more time? Sure. So I bought an eight hundred dollar Tesla call. This will actually might work best if I share a Weeble screen and I can talk through it like that. I don't have a screen. Sorry. 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 Can everybody see my screen right now? Oh, uh, fuck. Yes. It's not that bad, Jeff. It's just a screen. Yeah, I've got to get moved over to Weeble because Ameritrade, no matter what I do, will not let me do these spreads. Yeah, definitely do that. So this was a couple days ago. Not at all. <laughs> this is how Jeff probably sells when he's trading too. Yeah. <laughs> I got three eggs left and I just fucking dropped one of my dogs eating it off the ground. <laughs> oh, okay. So I think it was bouncing. It was it was pretty far away from this is before earnings. Um it was pretty far away from um the strike that I was getting. So I think maybe it was like in the 730s, it was sitting in here. And so it was sitting at this support, it was trading sideways for a minute here, maybe right here. And so I bought a call here. Let's just pretend like it was 733. I bought an 800 call and I spent $1,000 on it. Then it pulled back a little bit. I might've bought another one here and got it a little bit cheaper, but then it took off and it went up to 743 here. And so somewhere in that time frame there, I sold the $810 call 
for the same price that I had bought the $800 call for. You following that now? So I yes. created this spread. I bought a call here and I sold a higher striked call here off of that call without owning the shares, which created a spread. But I sold the call for the same price, the higher striked call for the same price that I bought the lower striked call for. So it ended up making this play free. Now, if Tesla would have gone to $820, I would have made $1,000 for a $0 investment. Make sense? Yes. And you're doing these for the same time period, correct? Buying and selling? In this case, yes. And especially when I'm doing like a quick day trade like that or when I'm using it as a quick hedge like that, yes. You can do it as a calendar spread um, or like a, a poor man's covered call, they could sometimes call it, where you buy options, let's say you buy leaps for January, let's say you buy Tesla $900 calls for January, then you could start selling $1,000 calls every month up until January off of those, that's called a calendar spread. I usually don't, don't do that, which is over. All right, so that's what I did when I recently showed how to day trade Tesla options to get them for free. Essentially, my risk in the spreads that I was holding last week was $0 because I'd already been paid for them by selling the call for the same price that I bought the call for. All right, so other ways that you can hedge is using debit spreads or selling options off the options you own. That's what I just talked about. You can do that with puts too. So let's say you want you think Peloton's going down, so you buy a $100 put and then it drops. So you sell a $90 put and you would make the premium that way, create the spread. You could sell them for the same price and, and limit your risk that way. It's the same thing as I just explained, just going down instead of going up. Um, you can also buy, you can also buy opposing options positions so you would buy a put to offset the call you're holding. So that's kind of what I've been doing with IPOE. Um, just expecting that short squeeze any day within the next two months. But I'm, I would hate to miss it. If you miss it, uh, you're going to be crying. Um, so I, I'm going all in on that one. I got calls at every expiration and every strike from here to freaking January. And I know it's going to take off eventually. And I know I'm going to get paid a lot once it does. But I also know that it is a short squeeze and the shorts are attacking it. Now the shorts attacked it and the shorts ran out of shares too short. So then you see that article come out in Investor's Place on Friday, just like I told you it would, um, because they ran out of shares to short. So that's what they do to drive the price down. They're shorting, 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 driving the price down. They're out of shares to short. Now, what else can they do to drive the price down? Okay, they do a media blitz. They they file a lawsuit against IPOE um, and then put out a bunch of articles about the lawsuit. You'll see this stuff all the time in every every stock, every spec. They just attack the crap out of it with this stuff. And sometimes they're right. I mean, with Multiplan, with MPLN, um, they, they won that one. They pushed that baby from, you know, 10. It got up when it was pre-merger. It was like 13, 14, I think. And then it tanked to uh, five or six when Muddy Waters put out his short report on that stock. So they win sometimes. And that is why with IPOE, I'm going to be on the winning side regardless. So I have those $15 puts. Now, if IPOE crashes, those puts cost me, I think, five, 10 bucks, 10 bucks a piece. So if the shorts win for this month and IPO crashes to 15, 14 bucks, those puts will have a 1000% return and they'll pay for the entire play. So they would pay for all the calls that I lost money on as well. Also, if it moves a lot like that, the IV will go up anyways. It's like the opposite of what happens um, after earnings. So after earnings, you get IV crush because the event has happened. But when a stock is moving all over the place quickly, the IV goes up. So the premium goes up. So the premium on the calls would probably go up even if the stock went way down. And then I'd make money off the puts and the premium that went up on the calls. So it's really a win, 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 win 
with the IPOE play as long as you're playing both sides of it. So with the, when people start in the pit bulls, I, I call them puppies. And I say that the three S's of a pit bull pup are to start small, slow, and smart. But for us, there's four. So it's the four S's of a pit boss is, is strangle, straddle, spreads, and selling. So you're either going to be running strangle, straddles, or spreads on your plays, or you're going to be selling options off of your plays or just selling options in general. Does that make sense? Anybody? I guess where is the only part, because I'm doing the same thing in IPOE, which I'm not worried about them, but in a regular situation, a different stock, if you're doing the same strategy, where, where's that gonna bite you? Where can it bite you? Well, that's actually my next slide. There's only really one way that it does. I um, mean, it's very calculated. So it, it's not an uncalculated risk like short selling is. It's very calculated. Um, so the only risk to hedging is the risk, the, the risk to limiting risk is the additional cost of the hedge. So it's an insurance policy for your investment or your trade, but insurance isn't free. So you do have to pay for it. And that's where the extra risk is. So let's say with IPOE, let's say you buy a 15, even with IPOE, let's just say you bought. So I have 400 calls and 100 puts. So my calls are usually mostly 17, 50 and 20. And my puts are mostly 15. So if IPOE stays $17 from now until the end of May, all of those options, all 500 of them would expire worthless. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait that long for that to happen. So I don't really have to worry about it. Um, and that's why I so saw like with GIK, with GIK, it dropped a lot and I was holding the puts and I sold all the puts when it did drop and I made... I'm profitable on GIK. I've made like a 150, 200% return on GIK, but I still have 150, 200 calls just sitting there pretty much worthless. They're like five bucks a piece or something, but um, you never know. They got like three weeks left on them. So if GIK rockets over the next three weeks, if there's a short squeeze there or anything, it, it helps. So the only real risk is the extra money that you have to pay for the other option that you're using as a hedge. All right, so quick little summary is that it is always smart to hedge a larger position. So you never want to be all in on a position. Um, I think Mick, you feel, you saw Mick's pain um, in going all in with a position. And Rob, not Rob, um, Dan too. Dan lost his lunch not listening to me um, and, and going all in on positions with no hedge. So it, it, it's really bad idea. It's really smart to hedge your large positions. Now, the small ones, if I'm just buying a handful of calls, I'm not going to worry about it too much. But if I'm, if I'm spending more than 1% of my account, I'm definitely using a hedge, but it depends on your strategy, your goals. Um, it can be done for stocks and options. And this is why everybody else says that options are too risky. Don't touch options. But in reality, I feel like options give us the opportunity to limit our risks and not take on as much initial risk up front. So after all that, anybody got any questions for me? Tiffany, I appreciate your, your questions. And that, Cause somebody watching this sometime down the road is gonna be asking themselves those same things. Nobody has any questions though, I'm out of here. I'm good, Evan, thank you though. I'm just doing my breakfast, but yeah, I'm listening and I'm paying attention, so. Awesome. Yeah, just shoot me a message if you guys uh, are trying anything or want to try anything with this, if you're wondering. Uh, so one of the questions I got a lot this week was like, um, and Tiffany, it's kind of the same answer as I gave you, but it's like, how do I know how many puts to buy versus the calls I'm holding? And it's like, how much are you willing to pay for your insurance policy is basically how you answer that. Because if you're holding... What's your, uh, what, what's your opinion on those those $15 puts on IPOE. Yeah, I mean, my my whole thing is I do it based on my belief in the play. So I believe a lot that IPOE is going to be a short squeeze and is going to rock it. And I but I also I know I go through every variable in my head beforehand. So I know what else can happen too. And I know what's happened in the past to other stocks that you may have thought were going to be a short squeeze and then turn out to have the shorts win. And I know that. The times I've done that, that if I've held 25% ratio call, puts to calls on a call position, I'm heavy and that doesn't cost that much. And the $15 puts, Jeff, I think they're 
10, like 30 bucks, 30, 30 bucks, like 30 bucks. Yeah. Right now. I mean, me, I, I don't know what that is to you, but to me, that's, that's nothing. That's, no, I, I think I'm like boring. Cause I've only got, uh, let's see, six calls, 1750 calls. So if you have six, 1750 calls, personally, what I would do is I'd buy four $20 calls because they're about 20 bucks right now, unless it gaps up on Monday morning, in which case you missed your luck, but I would buy them anyways after that. Um, so I would buy $20 calls because they're really cheap. And then I would buy the $15 puts. So you could always do this. If it goes up on Monday, buy the $15 puts because they'll be cheaper. And if it yeah. pulls back on Monday, buy the $20 calls because they'll be cheaper. So like when I have a goal to add to a position like that, so my goal would be to add a couple calls and add a couple puts. I'm going to do it strategically so that the times that I'm adding are when I'm getting the best price on the calls or the puts. Okay. So the premiums will fluctuate throughout the day. Yes. Not just okay. the premiums, but the intrinsic value as well, because the price, oh. of the, op, the price of the underlying stock goes up and down throughout the day. So, you know, if IPO starts so on a plate, 20, 20, 20, 21, 30, 31, all of a sudden those $15 calls are going to be five bucks. And then at which point I'll buy a hundred. So on a play, like, IPOE, I know I played it last month. When, it, at what point are you rolling to the next month or saying this month is like, we're not going to make it? Well, so the way that I did IPOE is because it's literally just waiting on one new, when one news story is all it takes with this one and it's going through the roof. I mean, their short position is crazy. If they don't have stop losses set on that thing, they're going to be eaten alive. Um, and if they do, then it just goes higher and the ones who don't get eaten alive. But I have several calls that expire in May, but then I have calls that expire in June and July and August and January as well. So what I would do is if the calls that for May expire worthless, I would just buy more of the other ones. That makes sense. So I'll probably let them run into the end. But like, let's say I, has, I got a lot of 1750 calls and let's say that it's, it's $19 um, and, and May 21st is approaching. I'll probably be selling those 1750 calls to take some profits there and then buying some maybe $20 calls that are in June, July for the same price that I sell the 1750s for. So that would be my way of rolling it without taking on any additional cost. Okay. That all makes good sense, my friend. Awesome, man. Glad to hear it. Just let me know if you have any questions. Come on throughout the week. And uh, yeah, let's hope for a good week. Let's hope SEC just got to tell us something about these specs, man. So in England, they said that, or in the EU, whatever they're, whoever governs the stocks overseas, I forget. But they started, they're allowing more specs to come. So essentially, it's putting pressure on the US market that if they don't allow specs, then England is going to have an advantage. So I don't know. But Hopefully they'll they'll announce something for us soon. Good. All right, guys. Have a great week. Hit me up if you need anything. Go to the gym. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Peace.